Hello, class. George here. And in this video, we're going to start off by actually creating our extension class. That is a subclass of button, which is a widget we've used a few times already inside this video series. And we're going to call it a memory button. And I had mentioned this before, and I'm kind of uh, breaking some rules here. I'm I'm sort of bending the whole MVC model view controller way of dealing with things by taking some of this model data and combining it with this view object. It just ended up being more convenient for me and reduced my dependency on searching for things and also using dictionaries to just have this information given to me when the user presses a particular button. So what we want here is our own button that is going to be added to the grid that we've created. Right now we have a four by four grid that we specified. This button is going to have a set size in uh, uh, device independent pixels, DP, and that's just gonna be an arbitrary 50 right now because that's what looked good for me. So our class itself is going to have to contain the row and the column that this particular uh, button pertains to. And we're going to have, of course, a four by four version of that. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Rows going this way, columns going this way. So this would be zero, zero, one, two, three, one, two, three, meaning this is zero comma zero. And this one down here is going to be three, three. Now to make our life easy, what's gonna happen is that this button, when we create it basically, is going to store an ID to the, to the resources that it's going to use. These buttons are going to use two resources, basically. There's going to be a front image and a back image. The back is simply a question mark, and the front is just going to be a one of eight possible numbers from one through eight. So we're actually going to use the ID of the front here to specify or to find matches so that when the user actually clicks on two different objects, we're gonna compare if the ID of that resource, the front resource is the same for both. And if it is, then we're good, then we found a match. And if they're different, well, we haven't found a match, so reject that, that choice selection. We're gonna store the front and back as drawable objects, which are how we're gonna store our images. And we're gonna store them also inside the res folder under drawable. Now there's a much longer discussion we could have on uh, graphics, drawables, um, different resolutions and so forth, but it's, it's just a little bit too early for us to get into that right now. It's a little complicated. But when you are creating your graphics, do realize you're developing for a mobile or a, uh, a tablet device, and the resolution should not be insane. If you're a, a 3D game developer, kind of like me, you're probably used to making, you know, like 2048s or 4096s or even higher te uh, textures nowadays. This is a big no-no. In fact, you're going to crash your app. You're going to run out of memory. Don't do that. In fact, the buttons that I ended up making for this, each one was only 128 by 128. And Android is going to handle resizing this element to fit within the, uh, the device independent pixels that we've selected. Uh, and there, like I said, are things that we can use things comparable to mit maps on, uh, in, in, in uh, video games, but we're not there yet. We'll get to that soon. Now, since we're generating these views on the fly at runtime, right, we are not hooking up any XML. We don't have some XML to help us out in this case which means we're going to have to find those resources ourselves. And what do I mean by resources? Well, I don't mean that find view by ID stuff. We, we already have the view. We're creating it. What I mean is actually finding these drawables. So we're going to have to look at how to grab resources at runtime, uh, pull them out, and then apply them to different uh, view objects. We're also going to see how we can set the background object or, or image of a button. That'll be interesting. And there's going to be just a couple functions or methods that we add to this this particular class to make things work just right. So the most important one is the flip method. And what that's gonna do is flip this object around. So in order to make flip work, which is where it goes from the back state to the front state and vice versa, we need to store some information in some bool values. So we're gonna have an is flipped value, which is gonna be set to false at first. And we're also going to have an is matched value, which is used to basically determine that this particular button has been matched. We're done with it. We no longer need to mess with it at all. So ignore it from here on out. And that's going to be set to false at first as well. And flip is basically going to check these states and it's going to change the image based upon whether or not it's, it's basically on its front side or its back side or if it's matched. Okay, I think that's enough talking. Let's jump into code now and actually get this done. All right, so we're in Android Studio. Let's come on over to the Java side of things in our Android app folder under Java. Right-click New Java Class. Hit OK. Our new class name is going to be Memory Button, and this is going to extend extends button Android dot Widgets button in particular. 
it's going to give us some red squiggles saying that there's no default constructor available for android.widget.button, which basically means we need to make sure that we call our super class and call its constructor, which is not by default empty uh, or void of parameters. So let's go ahead and create our constructor, public memory button. A uh, button by default is going to take in a context value. It is going to be the activity itself we pass in as the context. Um, and that's just going to let us find resources and other valuable information. Hit uh, Alt Enter to make sure we bring that in. Now we're going to have several other parameters we're going to add to this. We're going to do an int r for row and int c for column. And finally, an integer resource value. That's going to be int front image drawable ID. Long name, but I prefer long names to not understanding what they are. Now we need to make sure we call our super class and we need to pass it the context. And that should get rid of the red squiggle because now we're not uh, invoking a constructor that doesn't exist. All right, so let's start saving things out. So that means we need to create some uh, let's create protected row, protected int row is equal to protected int row, protected int column, and protected int front drawable ID. Save these on out down here. Row is going to be equal to R column is equal to C, front, front drawable ID is going to be equal to front image drawable ID. Let's put those states in I was mentioning before. So let's do boolean, make sure these are protected. Boolean is flipped, it's going to be equal to false, protected, protected, bool is matched is going to equal false. Now we're going to need to store away the images that we're bringing in and they're actually called drawables. Um, before we start messing with these we should probably add them to our project. So over here in our resource folder as I had mentioned resources are for anything other than code. There is another kind of uh, storing mechanism we can use besides resources that are called assets but we're not quite ready to get to that yet. We'll be dealing with that in the future. Under drawable we can place uh, drawable objects such as images. So let's go ahead and I've already created several images for myself. This is not a Photoshop class. So make your own images like I had mentioned before. They were 128 by 128. So here are my texture files. I have a button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Incredibly important. Make sure that they're all lowercase. If you have uppercase letters in your name, it will not work. So don't expect it to. That is the most popular error when you're first bringing in um, texture files into your applications. So I'm just literally going to right click, copy these. If we want to, we can come over here. I'm just going to show an explorer, go in a drawable. Now you'll notice there's a lot more folders here. There's mitmaps for different resolutions of devices. Once again, we're not getting into that right now. Let's just go in a drawable, right click and paste. There's all of our different PNG files. Come on back over here. There's all of our buttons and question marks right there as resources, which we'll be bringing in through the activity manager later. So these are drawables. And what we want to do is store those for future use. So we're going to do a protected drawable and call it front and then another protected drawable and call this back. The back is going to end up always being the question mark in my case. And the front is going to be randomly assigned by the game activity for this particular button. So now we need to grab these resources. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's do front is going to be equal to. So this is going to be interesting. Um, so because of the version of Android we're targeting, which is a later version, uh, we need to be careful about compatibility. So if you try to do something like this, we're going to use the context because the context actually contains information about our application and specifically where these resources are stored. Hence why we go through that. And you call get drawable. It's going to ask for a resource ID and that looks just fine. So why don't we just do front image drawable ID? Now we're going to get a, uh, a little bit of an error here saying call requires API level 21. Our current minimum is 17 and that, that's a problem. So we need to be backwards compatible. Now luckily for us, because we're using that whole application compatibility thing, Android has been nice enough to provide us with uh, some methods that are actually going to handle this for us. You can do this manually if you want to by literally checking the, uh, the build SDK value against uh, any particular one you want. And that's incredibly easy to do. Or you can use the method I'm about to show you. So what we can do is front is going to be equal to app compat drawable manager dot get dot get drawable. And now we pass in our context, which we already have. And then the next thing we need is the ID, which we also have, front image drawable ID. This is simply making sure in one line of code that we're in the right version of Android to call the right functionality. It'll handle this automatically. 
So another thing you could actually do here is if you wanted to, you could do build dot version dot SDK int. And if that's going to be greater than or equal to build dot version codes dot, and you can pick whatever version you want to, you can test to see what version of Android you're running on and use if or else to choose what functionality you should be using based upon things being deprecated or, or not available to you. We also want to get that back image and that's going to always be the same. So let's do back is equal to app compat.get.getDrawable dot dot get drawable context and then back and then r dot drawable dot whoops r dot drawable we want to make sure we choose r dot drawable from android dot r and now we can find our particular button which is button underscore uh, make sure you include the r file up here otherwise you're not going to be able to link to it properly we can see now that we have that included we can choose any of the different uh, uh, variations we have here. Let's go ahead and set the background of this button. That's really easy. It's just set background and we pass it a drawable. In this case, it's going to be back. Now the next part is might be a tiny bit confusing. And uh, there's a reason why I spent some time in a previous video talking about layouts uh, and specifically the layout parameters. We're going to have to generate our own layout parameters for this view that we have. And in doing so, we're going to have to also set them up knowing that our parent is going to be a grid. The way we do this is actually by defining our own grid layout object dot and within that are going to be a layout parameters class specifically for the grid layout object. Let's just call this temp params. We're going to set this equal to a new instance of grid layout params. Now there's a few different constructors for us. The first one is what we really want to look at and that is spec row spec spec column spec. This is how we're going to tell Android where this particular view is supposed to be set up. So let's do grid layout dot spec and we're going to say this is uh well whatever we pass in right row and then grid layout dot spec column one of the most common things for you to screw up is to use the capital version of spec in which case you'll get an error and you won't understand why unless you double check that there we are so now we're going to want to set this as our layout parameters set layout params we pass in a layout parameter which is going to be temp params there we are now the layout parameters are our parameters for laying us out. I mean, it's going to control all sorts of things. So we don't just want to control the layout itself and how we fall within it. We also want to want to control our size. And if we take a look, we have on our params, let's do temp params dot. And we have, in this case, a width value. The problem is it takes an integer and that integer value is going to be a pixel value, not a device independent value, which means that depending upon the device we're using, the size of that image will change. We want to take into consideration when we do this, the device, the density independence of it. And we do that by creating a scale factor. We can get this scale factor from something called the display metrics. So let's go ahead and do that. So our width is going to be equal to, we're going to type cast this over into an integer because when we're dealing with scaling things, we're going to have floating point values. And we want to use get resources dot get display metrics dot density. And we're going to multiply this by whatever size we like. When I was testing thing, things out at the beginning and putting buttons in here manually, I like the size of 50 dp in this case. Now I want this to be a square, so I'm going to do that twice, but instead of width, we're going to do height. Yes, you can save this out to a, you know, a size field if you want to. It, it doesn't matter for me right now. All right, and with that, we have most of this class filled out. We are going to add just a little bit more. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to add are some setters and getters. So let's right click here and use generate. Let's do a setter and a getter for matching is matched. So now we can easily grab those values. We'll want to be able to check if this thing's matched or not. We're also going to want to get that drawable ID because I plan on using that later on to determine whether or not two objects match. If they have the same drawable object, that is the same image file they're using, uh, then they should be good to go. They're, they're the same thing. So let's do a getter front drawable int or ID. And the last thing we're going to implement is that flip function. That's going to be a public void flip. This one's really easy. First, we're going to do a check to see whether or not this object is matched. Uh, remember, flip is going to be called when the user presses one of these buttons down. So let's do if is matched, just return. We don't want to do anything. You chose something that was already done with. Next up, do if, if it's been flipped this time, what we're going to want to do is set the background equal to our back image, just back. And we're going to want to do is flipped is equal to false, or you can nod it. It's up to you. Else, what are we going to do? Well, set background to front and is flipped is equal to true. All right, that does it for our memory button class. In our next video, we're going to instantiate those memory buttons and pack them into our grid view. And then we're going to create the uh, 
code to deal with the listeners and so forth. Uh, it will be probably a little bit longer than usual, but we should wrap it all up in the next video. Thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.